Oh man. All right. Now moving on to another topic. What's 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 going on with you and Rob O'Neill, man? I see you guys beefing um on the <laughs> interweb about who really shot bin Laden. Do you remember when when um when that first happened? I think it was Rob Wiggle, which I love him, the fucking Marine. He had that oh, skit. Yeah. Oh <laughs> the I shot bin Laden skit. Yeah, yeah that's exactly who it, it is. It was epic, dude. <laughs> But well, yeah, I see you guys yeah. going back and forth. So what's uh, the whole story behind that? I uh, and I'm sure there's you know some 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 followers you have that that weren't special operations. Yeah. But um, that statement you made, you know, or the statement I'm, that I'm about to make to reinforce you just said that Rob O'Neill did not kill Bin Laden. Every one of every one of the guys in special operations will go, yeah, we all know that. And then I'm and something tells me everyone who's just you know is, is a fan of the special operations is going to go, what? Yeah, yeah, what this is news to me. Um, I uh, I did a two net, I did a two hour podcast. I'm, I'm a co host on a podcast called the Anti Hero Podcast, mm-hmm. and we and we did a two hour podcast breaking down the Rob O'Neill uh story. Uh, Matt Bissonette wrote a book called Easy Day. Matt Bissonette did a 60 minute interview breaking down the mission. He tells the same story that I've heard from SEAL Team 6 members themselves that were on the mission that a team went in there and, you know, and and killed bin Laden. In fact, I'll, I'll step back. The point man shot bin Laden as he looked in the doorway as they were moving up the stairs to the third floor. The point man more, you know, is the one who killed him. And then four guys move into that room and they all took security shots on him because as you enter the room, the guys on the ground, you still you you still shoot him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's how it happened. Matt Bissonette, who was there, tells that story. Um, oddly enough, not always a, uh, a star witness, but the, uh, Bin Laden's wife, who was also in that room, gives an account in an interview about how his husband died, talks about how a team of Navy SEALs entered the room and killed him. So there's another, you know, eyewitness account and Matt Cole, an investigative reporter, interviewed like 17 guys uh and all you know all uh gave the same give the same story so it's not there's plenty of uh of open source information out there um and then of course i went through his his many interviews and showed how uh he um at times uh tells different stories his story kind of grows throughout the years and then really just from a tier one operator aspect of being on hundreds of missions. Um, like, you know, when you hear a story and you're like, that's not right. That's not how it happens. Mm-hmm. That's not how, it, that's not what happens under NVGs. Um, if anyone here wants to know about it, it's episode 37 of the anti-hero podcast. It's two hours long. We'll put a get, link down below for him. Yeah. When you get done, listen to that podcast, you'll, you'll be more blown away that he got away with it. And mm-hmm. Some of the questions that people have would be like, who cares? Bin Laden's dead. Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter who killed him. It absolutely matters. That is stolen valor. He's saying he did something. He says that he was the only person in the room and single-handedly shot Bin Laden in the face three times while standing face-to-face with the world's deadliest leader. And he and he alone did it, and it wasn't a team effort. When he wasn't the one who killed him, uh, he was in the room. He was probably the fourth person in that room. But Bin Laden was was dead before before he even walked in. And the man has made millions of dollars taking credit for something his teammates did. And we should have a problem with that. Yeah. L- l- let me put it this way. Let's say you're a New England a New England Patriots fan, and Tom Bay Tom Brady throws the game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. And this was the Super Bowl of missions for for special operations. Could you imagine what the country would do if the third string quarterback came out publicly and was like, <laughs> I threw that touchdown. And then, and then everybody was like, well, who cares who threw the touchdown as long as the Patriots won the Super Bowl? America would go crazy calling this guy a liar, calling him a scumbag, call him, you know, you know, and and that and then he ends up taking credit for it and making millions of dollars for it and becomes the star of the Super Bowl that he didn't do. So yeah, it's a big deal. And it should be a big deal to us as Americans and especially us as veterans. Yeah. So 
I agree with everything you're saying on your end. But to me, you know, since I started this whole social media campaign, like I, my, my intent is to serve young men that, that are yeah. looking for, you know, people to emulate. Right. And in my eyes, there's no greater um, folks out there to emulate than people that serve, whether it's yeah. military cops, firefight. Like, yes. Like that's what I'm about. Fuck yeah. all the, you know, influencers that are shaking their ass or lifting fake weights or like, I don't give a fuck about any of that, right? People, they should be e emulating us because we're the ones that that's done something worth emulating. But when you're on the public stage and you're lying like that, then what you're doing is you're telling these young men that it's all right to do that. That's the problem that I have is you're, you're representing something that's bigger than yourself and then you are just... Like no characters, no. This segment is brought to you by GreenBeretChronicles.com. At any given time, guys, if you are interested in going to Special Forces Assessment and Selection, go to GreenBeretChronicles.com and check out the prep courses that will also give you access to the Discord, right? I also have the Body by J workout program over at GreenBeret Chronicles, guys, where we work out to look good naked, all right? I have three different tiers. One involves me posting my workouts on a daily basis. The second one involves me doing just that and providing supplement feedback. And the third one allows me to custom made a program just for you. All right. While you're on there, guys, make sure you subscribe for the newsletter. That is my way of giving you guys extra content and bringing extra value to you guys. All right. So, again, that's GreenbergChronicles.com. Let's get back to the episode. Yeah. Fucking morals. None of that. And you're just yeah. telling these young men who are very influential that it's okay yeah. to do that. You know what I mean? And and that you could be rewarded for it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a travesty. Yeah. That's that's my issues with it, right? And for the longest there, I fucking believed them, right? I didn't know any better. It's not my community. So I was like, hey, man, if he's out here doing it, he's got books, he's making all sorts of, like, it must be true. Now, in your opinion, like, why is it anybody from his community policing him up? Oh, I, I I can answer that because when I was doing the podcast, all those guys I told you that I knew called me like, oh man, that was awesome. You know, good good job. That's you, you nailed it. Everything you said was absolutely correct. Um, and and what I would say to them is awesome. You know, I'm thinking about doing a follow on podcast. Uh, would would you would you be willing to to come on and say that? And they all go, no, nah, Brent. You know, I can't come on and say that. Here's here's why. I can talk about that mission all day long. Excuse me. I wasn't on the mission. It wasn't a Delta Force mission. It, it's the Delta Force is going to come after me for talking about a mission that I wasn't on. So there will be no repercussion for me talking about it. It's the same reason I didn't come on here talking about Delta Force missions. Once I start talking about things that I was a part of, things that I shouldn't be talking about, they'll do what's called, it's called PNG, persona mm -hmm. non grata. They will excommunicate me from the community from the community. Now, what does that mean? It's not that big of a deal to some people. Some people could care less, but like PNG me, I don't care. Um, so like once a year, I can go back to the unit and uh, you know, when we have the basically the old timers reunion, and I and I can I can go back and hang out with the boys and I can go see the old and I can see the old unit again. And you know, if it's a big enough gathering or promotion ceremony for an old friend or a change of command ceremony for an old friend, I can still go back to the unit and be a part of those. When you're a PNG, you are not allowed back at any of the events. So by the way, Rob O'Neill is PNG from, from SEAL team six. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anyone who, anyone from their command talk about a mission they were on will be PNG and it's just not worth it to them. They want to stay in good standings with, with, with the, what they call the command yeah and that's why that blows my mind man because he's probably blows like, my I'm mind gonna, too yeah it, he's because he's probably like fuck your png i got millions bitch like, e exactly exactly you know I mean? and, and, and there's there's a lot of things uh i'll just talk about real quick again i would say this could be a podcast again all on its own but it has mm -hmm. been it was a two-hour podcast <laughs> and i don't i don't i don't, don't want to drag anyone through that yeah. here um but some of the arguments will be well um, you know, Rob O'Neill's book was approved by the Navy. That is true. Sure enough was. And people don't understand that being approved by the DOD or the Department of Navy, 
they don't check for, they don't fact check. They don't look for accuracy of the book. They don't go and start asking all your teammates, hey, this is a story he gave. Is this true? The only thing they're reviewing for is revealing sens sensitive or classified information. And as long as you don't reveal any sensitive or classified information, you can say whatever you want in the book. That's their only job for approving a book. So when people come in and say, well, you know, his book was approved by the DOD, so it must be true. No. The only thing it must be is that it doesn't give away classified information. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the truth. Yeah. Obviously. Now, what would you say to all the folks out there that are going to tell you, hey, this is not your community, you know, don't throw you know, stone at a glass house and all that other bullshit. Cause I'm like, I love giving my opinions about this type yeah. of stuff. Cause again, if it's on social media and young men and women are looking at it, then there needs to be context to it. Right. Like, Hey, he's out here doing this. This is like, I'm in a community that is pretty yeah. similar to theirs. Like, Hey, this is what this means. Right. From somebody that's, that's experienced some shit. Right. Don't just take yeah. it for face value add some context to it. Cause then if you don't, these young men and women are going to take it and they're going to fucking run with it. And that within itself is dangerous. This is what I'd say to them. And this is what, yeah, I don't think people understand about the tier one community. Um, at the end of the day, that is my community. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you what that means. When I, when I separated from the green berets, green berets can't come visit me at work. Green Berets, you know, generally speaking, you know, aren't coming to my in my compound overseas. But I tell you, who can? Other tier one operators, SEAL Team Six can. Mm -hmm. So it's it's yeah, you know, I it really doesn't get viewed really as uh you know their SEALs and you know and they're in the Navy and we're in the Army. It becomes a tier one community. It really does. So he is part of a tier one community that I was in, which is the smallest community in the military. So it, you know, when they say, well, it's, it's not your community, it absolutely is. And there is a tier one operator out there uh, shopping around stolen valor and profiting for, from it. And like I told you, I, I had no, I, my whole career, I've had no problem telling people uh, the truth. Yeah. And, and, and this is no difference. And I'm not out there trying to create drama for drama's sake. This has nothing to do with drama, has nothing to do with clicks. It has to do with writing wrongs. Uh, if and we, I won't go into it, but you know, we talked a little bit before mm -hmm. the show. There's plenty of topics I could cover for clicks that I don't because yeah. it doesn't meet my threshold yep. for what's good, for what's good for the community, for what's wholesome. Um, but this is just a straightforward, luckily, a straightforward um, topic that uh, that I don't have a problem yeah. speaking up about because it's true. Now, do you think he'll ever come out and try to write this wrong, or you think he's gonna write that shit to? Well, I, well, I guess it's already out, right? But I, it's been a while since I've seen him anywhere as far as uh, podcasts. But I know he's made the rounds quite a bit and profiting from it. You think he'll ever write this wrong? No, I invited uh, at the end of the podcast. I, I, and if anyone watches the podcast, and or or if you don't. Don't judge me and, and be like, oh, you know, and think you know how I did that podcast. I talked about that podcast. You know, Rob O'Neill is a hero. He's a war hero. Uh, he served, you know, in the white side special operations, you know, combat deployment after combat deployment. He's a tier one operator. He did a lot of amazing things for this country. Um, but at the end of the day, all those things doesn't allow you to do what he did. Um, I did it in a very professional way at the, at the end of it, I, I basically begged him, you can write this wrong. Like you don't have to go to bed every night feeling like you're a fake. You don't have to worry every day thinking, man, one day the truth is going to come out. Um, if he ever came out the truth, I told, I'd even come out there. I'd stand beside you and give you a big hug afterwards. Mm -hmm. I won't even hold a grudge. People make mistakes. Yeah. Um, do I think he'll do it? Unfortunately, I don't. Do I think maybe some helmet cam footage may uh, finally come out one day and 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 prove differently? Uh, I I do. He'll it he'll he'll get proven one day that he was a liar. But it's too. But I don't think he'll care. He's he's made his millions. Yeah, bro. It just blows my mind, man. Because there's no situation or fucking environment that exists where I see anybody getting away with that. In essence, it's, 
or even in your you dude that's, that dude will probably get his ass beat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, it's, and I'm sure, you know, guys are thinking about it, but it, it, it just blows my mind that it's gotten this far. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It just fucking blows my mind. But there's, anyways, there's a, go check there's out the a podcast. Reason, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason he has a podcast and you won't see other SEAL Team 6 members on his podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah, He's, I'm not shit. I'm not even gonna say the name of his. You and I'll I'll, I'll talk offline about it, but I don't know if he did. <laughs> um, I don't want that shit going over here. But um. no, I hear you. 